Hello, hello. Welcome to my channel. If you're new, welcome back. If you're not, so I'm going to be doing a bit of a continuation of what I did for the series I read for Pride Readathon, in where I'll be reviewing the series I've recently completed. So I will be having to spoil here and there because unfortunately I'm going to need to give context as I discuss the series, but I will try to limit this. I will also be showcasing the art panels while I discuss, so there'll be that. And basically I'll just be going over the exploratory themes and basic premise of a series, the literature structure of the story, how it flows, the art, my likes as well as my dislikes, and then my overall take away of a series then giving it a score out of 10, likened to that of a mouse score. So with that all out of the way, let's begin. So today I'll be reviewing 20th Century Boys by Nawaki Irasawa. It debuted back in 1999 and is published in English by Fizz. It's categorized as a drama, mystery, sci-fi, seinen series, and you can either collect them in the single volumes of 24 or the perfect editions of 12. I myself had collected the perfect editions and they were really high quality and probably a lot easier to collect than the singles so I would recommend going down that route if you are looking to pick up the series. So the story centers around a core group of friends who back in the day when they were children in 1969 had created this sort of secret hideout clubhouse where they made up fantastical stories about all the heroics and adventures that they'd be embarking on as adults and how they were all gonna like save the world and be heroes and this story time skips back and forth between 1969 when they were children and when they're adults in the late 1990s early 2000s about that time frame so when adults, it starts to become a concern that the things that they wrote as children is starting to become reality. Like they're starting to actually occur. And this is concerning because what they wrote about was things like killer robots and killer virus epidemics, alien invasions, and it just seems fantastical, but it's starting to occur in reality as they're adults. And we come to find out it is being put forth by this cult where the leader of the cult, his name is Friend. His identity is hidden, right? And they just, everyone calls him Friend. And we learn that this Friend also knew this core group of friends back in the past, back in the day when they were children. And the whole series essentially is trying to stop uh, the cult and learn the identity behind its leader, the friend, and who it was and who it is from their past. So the exploratory theme throughout the narrative and story is nothing too psychologically deep it's fairly simple it's not in your face but it is simple and it just is kind of subtly there in the um yeah within the narrative and the yeah, underlining message in that as children our lack of introspection and in how we affect others and our naivety and coming to terms with that as adults so it's very very simple Nothing too, you know, profound, but yeah. So that would be the underlining sort of message and exploratory theme that is present. So what I want to, I think, discuss next would be his art. Um, so his art is fairly decent. There's nothing that really stands out in particular that's like, wow, mind-blowing, sort of spectacular. Nothing like that, but I mean, it is fairly decent. I know that Nawaki Irasawa has been sort of criticized for having what's known as quote-unquote same-face syndrome 
in where that your characters start to have the same face and it could be difficult to tell them apart because they start to look alike. And I do think it's true of this uh, critique. I think that it has merit. Uh, his characters are very stylized though, as in very unique to him, right? A lot of um, magakas, not all, but a lot of magakas will have a very kind of unique personalized style to their art and in terms of character design this is also present and I think uh, Arasawa's character designs you can always tell when he draws right um, there's a very particular Arasawa kind of look to his character designs so I think that is partly the case but I also think there's another reason as well to go alongside that and that is due to at least in terms of the 20th Century Boy series, um, character overbloat, which is a good segue to lead into my next sort of uh, discussion of the series and uh, the structure, flow, as well as what I disliked about the series. So what do I mean when I say character overbloat? Well, okay, so a lot of people, when they read the series, they touch upon the fact that there's a lot of characters that are written in, but they're always significant because he writes them in the beginning or like in the middle. Later down the line, he has them coming back around and you know, and everything connects or whatever. Okay. I disagree. I disagree that they, they are significant. I believe that they are insignificant and I will explain why. So, okay. <laughs> yes, he has lots of characters. Yes, he will have them come back around. However, they are irrelevant because if you removed, I'd say, half of the characters that he puts forth, nothing changes in the story, the plot. They have no relevancy to the plot. They affect nothing. They change nothing. They thus are rendered insignificant. And the reason why I have... I take issue with it is because this character overbloat mostly accumulates into affecting the story's flow and the structure as well as the pacing and tension the tension that you're trying to build up because this is a mystery right and sort of like yeah a sci-fi drama mystery kind of you know story so you essentially need to build tension that gets lost when you have me sort of focusing on irrelevant characters that mean nothing to me and obviously not to the plot itself because, like I said, they don't affect it. So what ends up happening is that now, because you've got me focused on these array of characters that are irrelevant, I don't care about, they affect nothing, you're just, it's, it becomes tedious. You replace the tension with tedious. That's not what you want to do to um, engage a reader. Um, also, so what I think would have made his story a lot more stronger, a lot more polished, would be if he just stuck to the main core group of friends, as well as, you know, the few relevant characters along the way, but get rid of, like, a ton of them, like, the rest, just throw them out. Yes, maybe your series would then become shorter. So what? It would be stronger. It would be quality over quantity let's just say so i'm just gonna even i'll put some of them up on screen this is just the ones that i can you know you know come up with the top of my head while i just kind of go through it quickly but yeah there's a lot of them that i would just get rid of and i think it would have been a lot stronger story um the pacing would have been a lot better also i want to talk about <laughs> something else i've kind of Notice that irked me is the fact of he's got his characters also just running around in circles for no reason. Like, there's been plenty of times when they could have taken the friend out, but they don't. And it's this overly dramatized scenarios and like just, you know, crazy situations such as like the creation of the virtual reality that simulates the past so um, well, that it just 
becomes sort of like time travel of a sense. It, it's weird. But yeah, so like, but why? Common sense would be if you want this, this shit to stop, go take up the friend. Go do that. Why are we running in circles like doing these side plot kind of, you know, mystery things to try to solve the mystery of the friend? Go get him. There's been plenty of times you've been in the room with him. And instead of focusing on how to just, you know, get to the friend to figure out his identity and stop him, you're, you're got your characters like doing things. Yeah, like going to the virtual reality simulation, like that's so unnecessary like common sense if this situation was real common sense you'd just go after the friend you wouldn't mess around with this other bullshit especially since you know time is of the essence because supposedly he's gonna wipe out the humanity on earth and whatever so yeah so it's a little bit kind of immersive breaking in that sense and also feels like you're just having your characters run around in circles to keep the story going it would have been a lot better if yeah if it was a shorter series and that he didn't waste time doing weird irrelevant things with his characters and creating characters that are also irrelevant and what i find interesting is that after you know finishing up the the series i did go check out some other people's thoughts on it even though I, i've already had my thoughts so it wasn't going to change. <laughs> um, I just was curious. And it, I found interesting is that a lot of people praise this as one of his best works and see it as one of his best works. And when they criticize his other series that are apart from 20th Century Boys, they say the same sort of arguments and critique the same way I see 20th Century Boys. They don't see it though with 20th Century Boys, they see it in his other works. Yet, not 20th Century Boys, which is weird because, like, it can't just be me. Like, that's too weird of a connection that what I'm saying about 20th Century Boys is what you're saying about his other works. I have not read his other works, so I cannot, you know, make any comments on that. But there's got to be something there. It can't just be all in my head. Yet, when you go, like, say, on um, Mal, this series has an incredibly high score. It scores an 8.95 out of 10, which is unique. <laughs> Not many series can, um, can claim that. Not only that, this series has won awards. And so, I mean, definitely beloved series. Uh, I did not score it that high. <laughs> I did not give it an 8.95. I will fill you in at the end of the video what my score actually is but yeah not that high so i also wanted to mention the ending some people actually you know a good amount of people tend to you know have issues with how he ends his works like i said i've only read 20th century boys so i can only really refer to that and personally i didn't mind the ambiguous ending um it was still clear enough for me to understand it um but it is a, a little bit ambiguous i also will state it's a little anticlimactic too but you know i didn't mind the ambiguity of it all um however <laughs> i'm including 21st century boys which is essentially volumes 23 and 24 or in the omnibus it's volume 12 because okay what had happened was that he actually initially ended it at such an odd place to end a story and my opinions might have been a lot different if he never came back to write the epilogue because yeah people were so bothered with such a weird cutoff of an ending that made absolutely no sense that didn't you know give any smidgen or inkling of like ooh, you know what transpired and what it all amounts to <laughs> that he had to come back to try to like clear it up a little bit because it bothered people so much because it definitely would be a weird place to stop but I'm not talking about that stopping point I'm talking about in the inclusion of uh, 21st century boys alongside that 
So before I wrap everything up, I know that it might seem like I'm being quite the negative Nancy when it comes to this series, but I mean, it's not like I hated it. I did enjoy it. I just wanted to remark on the you know issues I did take with it, particularly like in the middle where it starts to lag. And But I mean, great premise, great idea, and enjoyable enough that I still have my volumes. I'm not unhauling it. I just don't think it's... I just don't think it's anything to really write home about, really. <laughs> and yeah, <laughs> definitely did not give it um, an almost 9 out of 10 score. What my actual score for this series actually is a 6 out of 10. So when I score a series, if it's anything five below, I drop and then haul. Um, so it did just squeak by my unhaul, but it did squeak by, so it's not getting unhauled. So, I mean, it just, I find it to be average. Um, like it just, you know, mm, you know, okay. And maybe down the line, if I have no space left for my series of manga, I'd probably get rid of all the series I scored six. But for the time being, I am going to be keeping this in my collection anyway. So, yeah. <laughs> That's, I think, about everything I needed to say on 20th Century Boys.